Yeah, that's right one right there. In the diocese. And then it, then it, then Wait a minute, you up. have it here. The Holy God, source of life and fire of love. In the season of reflect the signs. We pray for those. We pray for those celebrating. Okay. Yeah, it's it was a little bit different. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's the same thing. <laughs> I was gonna say it I sounded wouldn't. like it just sounded like right one. Oh, yeah. yeah. The thighs and the bees. And the <laughs> okay. okay. All right. <laughs> Good morning. I want to welcome everyone to the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost, Rite 2. And um, we're going to begin our service with singing the opening hymn, 660, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee. Let me walk with thee in lowly paths of service free. Tell me thy secret, help me bear the strain of toil, the fret of care. Help me the slow of heart to move by some clear winning word of love. Teach me the wayward feet to stay and guide them in the homeward way. Teach me thy patience still with thee In closer, dearer company In work that keeps faith sweet and strong In trust that triumphs over In hope that sends a shining ray Far down the future's broadening way In peace that only thou canst give With thee, O Master, let me Please join together in saying the confession. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Let us all say together the Jubilati, Psalm 100. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Please be seated for the readings. Please say together <clears throat> Psalm 104. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, how excellent is your greatness. You are clothed with majesty and splendor. You wrap yourselves with light as with a cloak and spread out the heavens like a curtain. You lay the beams of your chambers in the waters above. You make the clouds of your chariot. You ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds of messenger and flames of fire your servants. You have set earth upon its foundations so that it never shall move at any time. You covered it with deep as with a mantle. The water stood higher than the mountains. At your rebuke they fled. At the voice of the thunder, they hastened away. They went up on the hills and down the valleys beneath to the places you had appointed for them. You set the limits that they should not pass. They shall not again cover the earth. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Hallelujah. The first lesson is from Job. <clears throat> the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkness counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. <clears throat> Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding. Who determined the measurements, and surely you know, <clears throat> or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? On who laid its cornerstone when morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Here endeth the lesson. Please say together the second song of Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are your, nor, nor your ways, my ways the Lord. The heavens are higher than the earth, 
so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seeds for sowing and eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second lesson is from Hebrews. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. <clears throat> he is able to deal gently with the ignorant and the wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins, as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but it takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. And he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Here ended the lesson. We will say Canticle 21 together. You are God. You are the Lord. We acclaim you. You are eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The wild army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide, the eternal Son of the Father, when you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death, and to open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, brought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with the saints the glory everlasting. We will now sing the sequence music for the beauty of the earth. And we have Trisha, Trisha Beatty here to lead us, so let's all sing as loud as we can. Oh, 
Oh, Stephanie is going to do the solo. Okay, sorry. The Gospel reading is from the book of Mark, and I'm going to start the reading three verses before what's in your bulletin, so you'll know you can catch up to me when I change books up here. (laughs) They were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. They were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. He took the twelve aside and began to tell them what was to happen to him, saying, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death. Then they will hand him over to the Gentiles, and they will mock him and spit upon him, and flog him, and after three days he will rise again. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, 
Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptize, baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many." Here ends the reading. Good morning. Please be seated. So the Revised Common Lectionary, that which is shared between Lutherans, Roman Catholics, and us Anglicans, gives two choices for the Old Testament reading. One you heard today, and the other one I based my sermon on. (laughs) So I apologize for that mistake. Uh, You heard a beautiful uh, slice of Job, but in the alternative, the book of Isaiah, um, Isaiah presents this concept of the suffering servant. So one of the things that I first learned in seminary is that many of the prophets, particularly the three heavy hitters, Jeremiah, Isaiah, and Ezekiel, had prophetic missions that lasted over decades. So when you take a look at like a a book of the Bible, it's very easy to think that like this this guy got a message from God, he whipped out his laptop, pulled up Word, kind of like banged it out, and then we were done. When actually, these messages evolved over the course of years. When Isaiah presents this image of the suffering servant, one of the peculiarities of his message is that he doesn't identify who this person is. And that's led a lot of scholars to assume that his contemporaries, his target audience, would have already known who that person was. So it would have been almost unnecessary or gratuitous to name him. In later chapters, Isaiah changes his tune, and he identifies all of Israel as the suffering servant. And in later history, particularly the Middle Ages, This became, I mean, it was a commonly accepted rabbinical understanding or interpretation. And this was a source of solace and comfort to the Jewish people. Because throughout time, as they faced oppression, violence, even deadly pogroms, the rabbis could tell their people that they, Israel, were not only receiving this oppression, this violence, from their Christian or Muslim neighbors, but they were actually experiencing it on behalf of the sins of their Muslim or Christian neighbors. In today's gospel, Jesus pretty much directly quotes Isaiah. Jesus clearly identifies himself as the suffering servant revealed in Isaiah. And basically what Jesus is saying, yep, folks, Isaiah got it right the first time. It's not all of Israel who's God's anointed suffering servant. It's a particular individual 
and that individual is me. Now, I got a wonderful indulgence from our dear deacon uh, because the revised common lectionary divides up Mark in such a way that in order to make any sense of this, I really needed those bonus two or three verses um, because it really frames the narrative in a very, very different light. So what is being said, particularly in those first couple verses? The first is it says that they were going up to Jerusalem when all of this occurred. As I mentioned to you the first time I was privileged to speak to you, it was another reading from Mark. Mark is a gospel of brevity, meaning there is no, he doesn't gild the lily. There's no extra fluff. So when he makes a point of saying something, it, it behooves us to listen. Jesus was what was called a peri, I'm going to mispronounce this, peripatactic rabbi, meaning that he walked around a lot. That was a style of teaching. Also, in, pagans used it, like Socrates, where these learned guys would walk around talking and their followers would trot after them and learn mainly through repetition. So for Mark to say we're going up to Jerusalem, it isn't about walking around. They walked around all the time. For Mark, as I mentioned in my first sermon to you guys, Mark always sees Jerusalem metaphorically, that this is the place, the location of the crucifixion, death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ. So when Mark says we're going up to Jerusalem, it's like a big flashing red, you know, sign, neon sign saying we're going to the crucifixion. Secondly, the Greek word for going up is actually a participle. It is a noun performing as a verb. In this case, the word is anabe, anabe non tes. And by, by using, by manipulating the Greek language to use a noun as a verb, it's not just that they're going up. It, it implies that it is a mission, that it is not only a physical but a spiritual ascent. Now, all of this has to be placed in context because we know from other Gospels that Jesus had basically been avoiding the civil authority. He had been hanging out in Gentile land and for, for a period of time. And one of the first things that they tell you at seminary is don't compliment people for coming to church. The second thing they tell you at seminary is don't try to parse out or divide what aspects of Jesus' words or actions reflect his divinity versus what actions or words of Jesus reflect his humanity. But today I'm going to do both because we know from other Gospels that Jesus had been lurking beyond the border in Gentile land. And it was at or a result of his encounter with the Syrophoenician woman that something in Jesus' mind changed. He learned. He showed that human capacity for learning. And he raced to Jerusalem. He raced to his fate. Now, I apologize for the double dippers. You have to hear this anecdote one more time. But I have a particular mental Im image of Jesus racing to Jerusalem. Most of you know that I live in Glastonbury and an unintended, unforeseen, just wow, perk of living where I live. I didn't know it when I bought the house is that less than a five minute walk from me, there's about, I don't know, more than a thousand, less than 2000 acres of preserved land. It was a bequest called Hollister Reserve. And the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts have done a wonderful job of clearing paths and, and marking them. It, 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 it is my therapy. I, I don't have a psychiatrist, but I've got a dog. 
and that dog in the woods, that's where I do my best thinking. That's where I compose this sermon in my head yesterday afternoon. So last spring, Teddy, that's my dog's name, and I were hiking through the woods, and I didn't have my glasses, and I saw a dead animal up ahead on the trail, what I thought was a dead animal. I couldn't make out what it was until we got closer, and I thought it was a dead bird. And I immediately was concerned about Teddy being a dog. I mean, I didn't want her to get fleas from this. I didn't want her to sniff it. I didn't want her to lick it. God forbid, I didn't want her to eat, try to eat it or drag it away. So we kept walking towards this thing while I was thinking how I'd handle it. And then much to my surprise, the animal wasn't dead at all. It was a mother turkey whose wings were out stretched because she was sheltering her brood. And as Teddy and I got too close for comfort, this turkey, like, just reeled around and was like, <laughs> and charged towards us. And I'd like to tell you that Teddy was like my great protector, you know, Canis Fidelis. But actually, that dog outran me. And I later took... You know, some guys at the gym, I'm like, am I a total turkey? Am I a total chicken for having fled from a turkey? But that image of this outstretched turkey, like wings out there, just charging forward, that's what I picture Jesus doing. Like, he, he had total buy-in. He knew his fate. And, and something in that encounter with that woman at the well made him wholly embrace it. Now, in our lives, we all encounter some profoundly stupid people. And you look like very nice, kind Christian people. You're probably very tolerant and indulgent. I'll admit that it's a weakness of, of mine. I get very frustrated by abject stupidity. But I think that we can all agree that even the densest dullard we've ever met understands something when it's been thoroughly explained to them three times. And that's why it was so important for us to include these opening verses to what the way the lectionary would divide the reading. Because it paints this narrative and these disciples in a very, very different light, and I think a better light. I mean, the gospel comes out and says they were afraid, but they continued on that mission. They continued on that ascent. They were terrified, but they continued to walk with Jesus. And faced with this impending calamity, it's just profoundly human for them to ask, like, maybe even try to bargain, like, is, is there something for us on the other side of this? It strikes me, at, it could strike you as ironic that Jesus rebukes them and asks them, can you drink of this cup? Can you accept this baptism? And then Jesus becomes prophetic and says, you will. And in fact, he was correct. With the exception of John, who died of an old age in Ephesus, virtually all of these men died hideous deaths. They were all martyred for their faith in, incredibly violent, in an incre incredibly violent way. And yes, we know the rest of the, of the story. We know that when Jesus was arrested, they abandoned him. We know that even when they heard about the resurrection, that they doubted him, that they cowered in fear in a locked room somewhere in the attic. We know that it took the ascension and Pentecost for them to really become who they were meant to be. But ultimately, they were transformed. We use the word disciple, but the Greek word is mathetes. It's cognate to our English word mathematics. 
meaning that a disciple is a learner. These men were transformed, and instead of just being learners, they became apostoloi, which is the plural of the Greek meaning that they were sent. Fundamentally, the whole beginning of the church, the whole story of our faith, is rooted in the fact that while these men were terribly afraid, they continued to walk. In my opinion, the, it's been the reinvigorating ministry of our outgoing presiding bishop, Michael Curry, that through him the Episcopal Church is rediscovering and quite frankly engaging in the very painful and difficult work of relearning evangelism. It's wonderful to speak to you. It's wonderful to speak to the converted. But so many of us, and certainly me, I, I, I'm not there yet in terms of being an apostle. I'm not yet comfortable about speaking to my faith to strangers. I'm not the best at inviting my gym rat friends or neighbors to church. And that's okay. It's okay. Because we're walking. I invite you to walk. Walk with Jesus. You've already taken the first several steps. It's a Sunday morning. You could sleep. So you see, I'm committing the second thing they tell you not to do in seminary. I'm complimenting people for actually coming to church. There's a million things that you could do with your morning, and yet you choose to be here. You are already choosing to walk. Walk with Jesus. Jesus Christ fully and completely incarnate God, Jesus Christ, fully, complete, suffering servant human. That is the beginning and the end of the gospel. That is the good, he is the good news. I, I shouldn't speak for all of you. Maybe some of you are much better at this than me. But we are the learners. We are the mathetes, but we're also the walkers, and we have the potential to be the, to be the apostles. We have the potential to be transformed. We have the potential to declare the good news of Jesus Christ to our Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and even the ends of the earth, by which I mean Willimantic. All right. But um cheap seats in the back. Let's pray and commit to that transformation. And in the meantime, while that's happening, let's just continue to walk with Jesus. Please stand as you are able, and let's say the Apostles' Creed together. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit <clears throat> and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again and judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the ways of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let, the, not, let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Let's also say together the collect of the day. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly, and even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A Collect for Sundays. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessings through our worship of you, that the week to, co to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A Collect for Peace. O God, the author of peace and lover of Concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we surely, trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any advers adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A Collect for Mission. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off, and to those who are near. Grant that people from everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll now have the offertory. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God. We will now sing hymn 455, O God of Love.
The prayers of the people for Pentecost. The prayers of the people for Pentecost. Holy God, source of life and fire of love, in this season of Pentecost, when we reflect again on what it means to be a community of faith and preach the gospel through our lives, we ask you to hear our prayer as we open our hearts to you. We pray for those whose lives closely touch our own, that they may always be in our hearts and have joy and happiness in their lives. We pray for those celebrating their birthdays this week, especially for Richard Kramer, and for those celebrating anniversaries, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. John's Waterbury, St. James West Hartford, St. John's West Hartford, the Convention Planning Committee, the Convention Worship Committee, all who participate in the annual convention, the Anglican Church in Rwanda. Spirit of love, hear our prayer. We pray with thanks for all those in our community who support the well-being of others. We pray for those who have requested our prayers, especially Ellen, Gloria, Judy, Nancy Kirkham, Sue Atkinson, Donna Kay, and for those who are listed in the continuing prayers list at the end of the bulletin. Spirit of love, hear our prayer. We pray for the church, for our retiring presiding bishop Michael and our presiding bishop-elect Sean Rowe, for our bishops Jeff and Laura, for Doug our seminarian, for our deacons Donna and Marge, and for all priests and deacons. We pray for all who proclaim the gospel to the ends of the earth, and for all who seek the truth. Spirit of love, we pray for all the leaders of the world, that they may make wise choices for everyone, and that they may lead us to honor one another and serve the common good. Spirit of love, hear our prayer. We pray for your wonderful creation, the earth and its streams, trees, mountains, and plants, we pray that the animals of the earth may freely enjoy these resources. Spirit of love, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, remembering especially Adrienne Gunbacher, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. The sanctuary candle is given to the glory of God by Stephanie Wheeler, in loving memory of her husband, Russell H. Wheeler, Jr., on his birthday. Spirit of love, we pray for those who do not understand or have not found your love, that they may seek a deeper knowledge of you. May your love find those who need you the most. Spirit of love, hear our prayer. For what else shall we pray today? Before we continue our service, there were a few announcements. There's a sign-up sheet in the back for um, people to donate 
finger foods for the um, concert we're having next um, Sunday. And um, also, I understand it's supposed to be a really good concert with um, some of the Von Trapp family singing for us. It's Saturday? Yes, Saturday, October 26th. Okay, sorry about that. So there's also a sign-up sheet for that. Okay. And there's also, um, we'll finalize the date pretty in the next couple of days. Um, if, you, if you participated last year in the Advent through Epiphany Liturgy Committee, you should have gotten an email from me this week. If you replied, thank you very much. If you didn't get an email from me and you'd like to be involved in that, just let me know and tell me how to get in touch with you and I'll provide you with a date. It'll probably be on November 4th and we're shooting for about 2 o'clock. And basically that'll be like mapping out what we do around here um, from Advent to the end of the day. Any more announcements? Mm -hmm. In thanksgiving for the many blessings of our lives, let us pray together the general thanksgiving. <clears throat> Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is number 477, All Praise to Thee.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.